from salary to a clothing store to selling goods from my vehicle driving from one rural district to the other. From forex trading to pyramid schemes to running a hair salon and a barber shop. From operating a bar and running a haberdashery, operating a fleet of taxis and selling lollipops through network marketing, to investing in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and other portfolio income, and lecturing at a community college. These are 13 different income streams that I built in my 20s that ended up paying me as much as 20,000 US dollars per month. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise up just so they could see me. Did what I had to do just to feed me. And what was left over, I put toward- Welcome back to another episode of Oversharing with Odetta. Thanks for always coming back. Even those of you who judge me, it's okay. I am just so grateful that you hit play. I don't take it for granted. Today is going to be more of a free flowing conversation where I'm going to share with you about 13 streams of income that I established in my 20s that was paying me pretty well for a good period of time. As always, if you're not yet a part of our family, please go ahead and subscribe and I look forward to welcoming you as a rock star. If you are already a part of our amazing rock stars family over here, I just want to say thank you for your commitment and your loyalty, especially those of you who watch the very long videos. I know you because of your comments. Thank you. I appreciate it. All that said, let's jump into it because we have 13 income sources to cover. So the first income source and my primary income source in my 20s was my salary. And I worked in my early 20s as a manager in a US company and that company was acquired by a US Fortune 500 company. And by age 25, I was actually promoted to a vice president in that company. And from I got to the management level, I was making a six figure US dollar compensation package and it only increased obviously when I got to the VP level. So that was my primary source of income, but it could not be my only one because you guys hear me talk all the time about the one commandment of finance that you should always obey. And that is thou shall not have one stream of income. Now the good thing about making a good salary from a young age is you have options as to where to invest. And for those who know my story and have read my book, you know that I didn't start there. I started from nothing, being born into a very poor and humble situation and just finding my way and having the help of many angels in my life that facilitated the accomplishments of my big goals. But we fast forward that part and we're now in my 20s and I have this amazing job that I almost didn't get was completely coincidental as I shared in my book but the bottom line is it's making the kind of salary that I did not think was possible living in Jamaica. Now, before I was working this salary, I was in all kind of little businesses here, investing, doing different side hustles. Like for example, when in college, I sold photographs, took photographs and sold them back to the students and made money. Why was that even lucrative at that time? Because it was before digital cameras and my mother was a lab technician. So when I took the photographs today, I could actually bring the physical photographs tomorrow which meant I offered express service and had my own niche because many people couldn't do that back then so I made a ton of money sell selling photos as a matter of fact it's one of the ways I was able to go through college because I had to fund that myself that said one of the first businesses that I invested in after I left college and started to earn a salary was a clothing store. Now, what was great about this opportunity is my nine to five job had me traveling 
all over the globe because I was a vice president in charge of several territories to include Ghana, Africa, uh, Mexico, several places in Mexico, many states in the US, Jamaica, Santa Domingo, India, a few places. So I had to be traveling a lot for work. What I do when I travel, I shop. I would shop on the weekends and then eventually I started to sell those things to people I knew until I started to sell it from my vehicle and eventually it was enough where I could go into business with my family and do so from a physical store. Now that store did very well. Why? When you travel for work, work covers expenses like your rental car, your hotel and everything related to that. So the money that I would use to buy the things that I sold was all I was investing because I didn't need to figure out money to put into flights and you know those kind of other expenses. Because of that, I was able to sell at a lower price and make a bigger margin or the same profit as others made because I didn't have that high of an expense so the business was doing well I also sold those little battery rider shorts you remember they were the thing back in those days I guess they still are the thing today but back then they were a thing and I was able to get them at very low prices because I know exactly how to shop on sale and I know when to shop and where to shop so I would be able to make huge margins because I bought at lower prices so that clothing store that was run by my family members did very well for the most part until of course a hurricane came and took off the roof of the place where we had the clothing store and after the roof came off that's when I moved to income stream number three so income stream number one was the salary two was clothing store now after the roof was blown off I had all this stock and didn't know what to do with it so you know what my uncle and I did at the time I was driving a surf a Toyota surf which is a huge SUV my uncle and I would pack up all the goods in the back of the surf now remember I'm at the time a vice president in a US Fortune 500 company making a six-figure US dollar compensation plan. I didn't have to do this. I wanted to do it because I was hungry to achieve the bigger goals that I had set for myself. So I would work Mondays to Fridays and then on Saturdays and Sundays my uncle and I would pack all the shoes, the sandals, the clothing, the accessories, into the trunk of that SUV and we would drive across rural St. James and pedal goods from the back of my vehicle. I would keep my book because some people you give the goods on credit and you go back the following week and you collect it and it did very well. As a matter of fact, some people when I went back the following week, they would say, where were you? I wanted to go to this party or this dead yard or this, you know, event and I was looking out for you to buy something to wear and you didn't get to come and that was likely when I was traveling or doing something that prohibited me from being able to pedal goods from my vehicle that income stream did very well but after a while it became an issue because I was traveling and spending more time overseas than I was here so eventually I sold off all the goods and I decided to try something different now the fourth income stream that I had in my 20s was forex trading forex was the newest thing everybody was talking about how they're making millions from forex and remember guys the internet was not as prominent as it is now so I remember traveling can't remember if it was Dallas Texas but I know it was somewhere in Texas and I met this guy in the airport who said he was a forex trader and of course I questioned him about what he was making how he was doing it and the conversation was so intriguing that 
I walked straight from that conversation into a bookstore in the airport and bought my first Forex trading book. And I still have it. I started to read everything I could about Forex. I bought other books and I started to stay up late at night to trade. And believe me, it was taxing because I was working a nine to five and in a senior position, my hours were not normal. I had to put in a lot of hours because I had a huge staff contingent across several geographies throughout the world and they were all on different time zones so my daily hours were probably from about six or so in the morning until sometimes 10 at night and then I would get a few hours sleep and wake up to trade on the market nevertheless everything I do I do it with a reason and I have a big why so it was fulfilling and I made a few dollars trading Forex but eventually I was zombified by the process because I was so tired at work that I could not function so that led me to the next income stream because round about that time, that same Forex was being talked about as a stream of income and people were leveraging it through things like Cash Plus and Olint, which were actual pyramid schemes. Now guys, this for me was income stream number five. I knew that they were not legitimate because having traded forex i knew what was possible so when the all ins and the cash plus when they were promising these high interest rate returns on money i thought to myself i would am a fool but the fact that they're trying to fool us doesn't mean i can't capitalize on it for me it's always about timing my risk appetite and my one rule to invest in and taking risks, which is never to invest what I can't afford to lose. So I did take my chances. Now, by the time I heard about Cash Plus and Olint, it was too late. I knew that with a pyramid scheme, you have to go in early. You see, it's like a curve because when you come in early, you have enough people coming in to pay you because they're really not earning the money that they're paying you in interest. And it will get to a point where there's not enough people coming in anymore to sustain the payments, which is when these pyramid schemes typically break. Now, I'm not telling you guys to invest in pyramid schemes. Not only am I not a financial advisor, but I never want you to do what I do. Do what I say, do not invest in pyramid schemes. Nevertheless, I took my chances. I didn't bother with Cash Plus and Olin because like I said, it was too far on the curve. And I know if I'd gone in, I would have lost my money. Told quite a people around me not to do it. They still did, they lost their money. But there was Swiss Cash. Who remembers Swiss Cash? If you remember Swiss Cash, write Swiss Cash in the, nah, probably I shouldn't encourage that. Anyway, if you remember Swiss Cash, you're probably in your 40s now. Swiss Cash was one of those schemes. I knew it was a scheme going in, but I was early enough going in and everybody that I told about Swiss Cash, I told them that it may not be legitimate and it may be a scheme. So do not invest more than you can afford to lose. I made a tidy sum off of Swiss Cash. Let's just leave it there. M1 was another one that again, they said that their returns came from Forex or Forex trading. I know it wasn't feasible or possible, but you know what? I heard about it early enough to go in and I certainly capitalized on it. And in every case, here is where greed gets us into trouble. You see, whether it was Swiss Cash or M1, Whenever I put my money in and I got that interest, I didn't roll over. You compound when you have legitimate investments. You don't do it when you know it's not right. So I pulled everything off. Every single month I took off that interest until I got my, my principal and then I probably would compound. But even then I would manage it very carefully. So I was able to recover in every single instance that I did this and again, I'm oversharing. Let me 
clarify you should never invest in pyramid schemes but i'm gonna take chances i'm a risk taker and if i see that there's an upside i'm gonna do it and i did and it worked and it was a powerful income stream in my 20s let's just say that now let's move on to income stream number six I had this like a shopping center but very small and it was out of town and I had enough space to put in a store uh, and some other things but I also had a barber chair and a hairdresser chair which I rented and of course I'm sure you know that model where you have the space you have the equipment you rent the chair the barber and the hairdresser they do here or nails whatever it is that they do to make money and they pay you a fixed rate from what they make every single month so that model worked very well and that was an income stream that I used in my 20s then that same plaza or center had enough space to put a bar so there was a bar there again it was operated by my family members and that bar did very well because it was in a square so there was a lot of traffic and it was set up really nice so we had a good clientele and it was right beside a post office where if you live in rural jamaica you know that people come to the post office to collect their mail and they usually hang out a bit after they have done it so being on the same building as the post office it created its own customer base so that bar did very well as an income stream now some years later still in my 20s my cousin came to me and said sandy which is my pet name I would like to get a motor vehicle can you help me to buy one and I say yeah man we went to the dealer he chose his vehicle I purchased it and the agreement was that he would take a few years to pay me back for it no profit I'm not making any profit off of it but he would pay me back for it over time well of course my cousin went and told his friend his friend came to me and said um, Sandy can you do the same thing so I thought to myself okay you're not really family yes we're from the same community but this can actually be a lucrative business so I figured out I did the math put it on a spreadsheet and I figured out exactly how to take this and to make it into a taxi conglomerate. How I could take several drivers who have an interest in doing this, buy them each a car, create a contract with them that says they will keep the car, operate it as a taxi. Of course, I'm gonna get it licensed properly with the transport authority and get it to them as a taxi they can operate it and then every single week they give me a set amount of money by the time i was done with this 10 cars later i was making a tidy sum i remember that i was making probably about 1800 dollars per week per car so at 10 cars that was probably about eighteen thousand dollars per week and this was in my 20s this is 20 odd years ago guys so it was very lucrative and of course it grew and did very well now what they were bringing in from the taxis on a weekly basis when you take that and extrapolate it over the two to three years that they were in this contract with me for it was so much that it would cover the cost to procure the vehicle plus I would make a tidy profit so at the end of two to three years when I gave that vehicle to them I didn't need to charge them for the vehicle the vehicle was like a gift you know what the benefit of operating a model like that is what's the biggest complaint of people who give their vehicles to taxi operators to operate on the road the fact that they destroy the vehicles they don't take good care of them the trick is with this contract if they're going to own the vehicle in two to three years, they have a vested interest to make sure that that vehicle is still in immaculate condition when they earn it and I give it over to them fully. So they took care of those vehicles like their own vehicle. They washed them regularly. I paid for them to be serviced, but they always showed up for servicing and the model just worked very well. But again, 
as life progressed, I got distracted and I moved on to different things. In the same building where we had the bar, the salon, and the barber shop, there was enough space, so we used it for a haberdashery. And in this haberdashery, we sell typical things that you would get in a haberdashery, what, what, what is sold in a, whether pots and pans or just think about a haberdashery. And I wouldn't say it did exceptionally well, but it was profitable. And again, it was operated by family members. So it was just us doing it as a team. Because I traveled so much again, I was able to buy low and sell at a good margin because I didn't have to consider the cost to travel in my selling prices because that was covered by the company. Now, the next big stream of income for me was network marketing. Now, I know the perception out there as it pertains to network marketing isn't good, but I want to tell you this, and, and this is why you can't have much ego when you're on this path to achieving financial freedom, because the things that we underestimate because of what other people say and we come to a consensus on it is sometimes the thing that we should have done to make money. Now, don't get me wrong. Some network marketing plans or programs are a scam. I chose them very carefully. The first one I did was Five Links, which was like a digital adapter. It was called a DTA box. It was very small and you could actually use this digital box, attach it to a regular phone, and for 25 US dollars per month, you could call unlimited to the US, Canada, and the UK. And one thing you know Jamaicans have a lot are relatives overseas in the diaspora. So when you gave the ones overseas that package and you gave their relatives in Jamaica a box, that call was actually free because they paid the $24 per month and that was it. Also, the ones in Jamaica, as long as they had internet connection, they attached the phone and they can call unlimited for $24 per month. It did exceptionally well. There was also a video phone that came with that package. So if you wanted to see your relatives, and guys, this is 20 odd years ago, before you had video calls and video phones, or even before you had the packages that the phone providers now have that say you can pay this amount and call unlimited overseas. This was long before those things existed. So this was a product that was in demand and it did very well. I did many other network marketing campaigns. So I did that one. I did one for skincare. The thing about me and network marketing is I had to believe in the products and I used them myself and I would show the results of them and use the results to market them. So that skincare line that I used, it was all natural and it worked miracles for my skin. It was called Esante. And I also sold lollipops with network marketing. So this was a lollipop that made you slim no joke guys I'm gonna find it and pop it up here and I decided to try it before I told anyone about it and I sucked on that lollipop for about six weeks and literally lost 30 plus pounds because at the time I was having it very difficult at work and just wasn't taking care of myself I lost 30 pounds so guess what lollipop sold itself what was in the lollipop was two things the psychology of always eating something so you don't even remember you're hungry because you have something in your mouth Two, eating candy which is sweet actually leaves a taste in the back of your throat that makes you feel full to a certain extent so I think that was some of the psychological impact and also I believe there were appetite suppressants in that lollipop the point is it worked and I sold lollipops like hot bread and again I was a VP in a US Fortune 500 company doing this at the time. Didn't have to, I chose to. Which is again why I tell you all the time that ego cannot have a role when you're on your path to pursuing financial freedom. Now the 11th income stream was stocks 
and as I said in a video that I shared recently as a benefit of being a vice president in a fortune 500 company located in the US a part of my compensation package included stocks so that's how I was introduced to stocks in my very early 20s and I fell in love with the idea of buying low and selling at a higher rate so in my 20s I decided to capitalize on investing in stocks and I was able to do so and do so very well and to this day I'm still investing in stocks and now I particularly like dividend paying stocks and you have heard me explain dividend paying stocks in other videos and I like them because it's passive income you don't have to sell your stocks you don't have to do anything with them just by buying stocks that generate a dividend at the end of the year you get that money as a gift from the company and you really don't have to put out any extra effort for it the 12th income stream and again I started to use it in my 20s came from investing in bonds mutual funds index funds I developed a habit bit of investing in portfolio income and over time it became a permanent part of my investment portfolio to this day portfolio income is my largest income stream that I have when compared to everything else now the 13th and final income stream happened by chance so I was a student of the Montego Bay Community College and I went there twice actually the first time I went there I left with a pregnancy the second time I went there I left as valedictorian student of the year most outstanding student in my course of study if I could win it I did I was also a scholarship winner for this huge island-wide scholarship so I made use of the second time around going to college because of that and further in my career and pursuing higher education I was asked to lecture at the Montego Bay Community College and I did that I think it was just one semester because I just didn't have the bandwidth to do it beyond that so I had to step away from that one but nevertheless when I was in my 20 it was one source of income that did very well for me so I have covered 13 income sources that I built in my 20s that paid me about 20,000 US dollars per month there were more and eventually I'll cover them over time on this channel but I didn't want to make this video too long so I just shared 13 high level ones my YouTube family I am so grateful if you're still here thank you for watching I'm gonna ask you to write in the comments if you're still here college lecturer and until next time what good